And hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Large Scale Consolidated Live. And look who I brought along with me. Who? I don't know. I was looking for the cat. That's who I brought. Uh -huh. She got thrown <laughs> out in the hallway. She was chewing on trains behind me. I can't have that. Oh, <laughs> no. Not again. I'll bring her with me when I come to visit you. She likes O-Gage. She can chew <laughs> on that. <laughs> so we are pretty excited tonight, everybody. But as usual, before we get started, we like to say hello to our guests who are in the chat. It looks like everybody was already chatting away. And uh, so we have Stay Loaded, Bruce Morrill, and Train Brothers Railway, Cody Risinger, Canadian Railroads, Four Track Railroad, Nico, who's being a little impatient there for us to come on. <laughs> and then we have uh, scrolling down. Sorry about this. You guys were chatting away. Kyle Kuiper. Yep, I got his name right again. Joseph Lipinski. And let's see who else we have. Mike. Uh, I'm not even going to try that last name. Everybody likes me to see me struggle with names. Dunbar, Brian Brune. Uh, then we have Ravenhawk, Vernon Guess. He's the uh, new owner of Reindeer Pass, so make sure you check out uh, his site. We like to support each other here. Uh, Chris Vile, Vale. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and Ted Descaris, Ken Hoffman, and scrolling down, Garden Railways, Garden RR, Rachel, uh, PG Fast Tracks, Taya Capital Woods, uh, Manimal 22, Rockwall Canyon Railroad. So, hello, everybody. And uh, welcome to our, our show, um, the show about large-scale trains. And we are, uh, hello, Slag Cat. And we are excited to announce uh, our next guest. I know everybody's waiting. Uh, gotta, hold on. Got to hang on a second. Yep. <laughs> we do have to uh, uh, pay, pay some respect to oh, our yes, sponsor right. of the show, uh, Split Jaw. I'm so used so, to not doing it. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. new to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you are correct. And yeah. now for uh, a word from our sponsor. Here we go. The following episode of Large Scale Consolidated Live is brought to you by Split Jaw, makers of quality metal products for the G scale modeling world. For rail clamps, expansion joints, bridges, and more, Split Jaw products has you covered. For more information, check out their website at www.railclamp.com. So, um, I have to get used to that part. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But we would like to bring up our next guest. And our next guest is Channing from AccuCraft. And we are so happy to have him. And so, hello. Hello, Channing. Hello. <laughs> and how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. How are you guys? We're doing good, and uh, we have a whole bunch of guests that are looking forward and excited about meeting you tonight. Yeah, I recognize a few names already, so excited Great. To, uh, to talk. So, <laughs> we like to start off our show. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Sean, but i got to put that up there for, for your benefit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was laughing about that too <laughs> but um, so we like to start off our show by asking our guests uh, how they got into G-Skill so how did you get into uh, AccuCraft trains and, and getting into doing G-Skill trains uh, well f for me it is a family business so when I was even a kid, I was going to work at AccuCraft during the summers. I would be testing models and just whatever they want me to do. I'd be organizing some stuff or helping unload the containers. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's like it really was my first job. 
<laughs> was in trains in this company. And also I did, you know, even in college, I even did the summer at the office. Then I went and went, you know, after college, I spent a, f- a couple of years doing um, software. And then uh, after a few more years of that, I got, I didn't want to do it anymore. So I got the offer to just fully join. And I went to, actually, I went overseas for four years and did uh, my time at the factory. Very so nice. that's how I got in and that's how I've been in. And that was 2015 was when I first went to China. And, wow. Yeah. And you've been with AccuCraft ever since. Yeah. So it's been, this is the seventh year. Yeah. And, and so who actually founded or started AccuCraft? AccuCraft founded in 1994. It was my uncle and, you know, he and my father started it. But my uncle was the owner. Oh, okay. And AccuCraft has a couple different brands that spin off of them, correct? Correct, yeah. So within AccuCraft, we have different brand names. So there's AML, which is almost everything that we do in 129. It's American Mainline. And then we have AMS, which is everything. American Model Supply, that's uh, mostly... 1 to 20.3 and 1 to 32 plastic, uh, our rolling stock. We have our ACL, American um, AccuCraft uh, Classic Line Limited. <laughs> I don't know what it stands for, but that, that's our like really high high end limited production brass metal uh, locomotives for the American market. In the years since 1994, we've you know. Uh, We've had comp- other distributors join us, like the UK. We have AccuCraft UK, and they have been a big, you know, great partner in all the last, you know, few decades. We've been working with them. We produce so many great British models through their, you know, with their help. Uh, Argyle in Australia. We did a few Australian models. We have now. We have now. We have Aster Hobby Japan. We've joined since. 2016 was a collaboration. Oh, yeah. 2016 was I was in China and we and the Aster guys they they joined us. They came over to our factory. I went over there. We you know since then we've been working together really closely, and it's been a huge improvement for both our uh, products. So we've had you know we've been able to use Japanese vendors. For, for our sheet metal, for our machining, for certain, you know, other things like uh, O-rings. And that has made our product better. It's made their product, and we've gotten their product out faster too. So that's, uh, that's the big, you know, that was the big thing we did in the last say, five years. Um, we also, you know, have MaxiTrack, that's another brand. That's not our brand. That's a UK company. We supply things for them, and they also help us with design. For this is for Ride On. I was going to say a maxi track. That's for what seven? Is that seven and a half? Seven and a quarter? We do a lot of like five inch and seven and a half, seven and a quarter in UK, and they do traction engines. Um, so we just have like a new one coming out right now, which is the one point five inch scale Alchin tractor. Which I, I, we can do is like show that later too. It's a live steam traction engine. It's oh, pretty yeah. and heavy. You can pull. You can pull a whole person sitting behind it on a little cart. Oh, very nice. So it sounds like the Acucast got a few different scales going. One twenty nine, one thirty two. The ride on. The right. The we do a little bit of HO. Really? We, I very, didn't know yeah, just a little bit. It's called Albre Models. And we we've, we've put out a few products, which were the um, uh, water, we do like brass water car, and a brass flanger, and we may do another one. Um, so it's not a well known thing that we do. We do the Seicho stuff, 
Yeah. We also do O the O scale, O narrow gauge. So O and three and O and thirty, and we do that under the AMS line. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Very nice. And uh, as far as the lysine stuff, you guys do um, butane and alcohol, or well, with lysine, there's you can do butane, you can do alcohol, we do, and you can do coal. So we do all those. Um, you know, we've, we've done so many different lysine models, and, and I've done my. I'm now I'm doing my YouTube channel on Steamaholic, which I think you guys you linked in the thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I have that in the description of the video, but uh, I'll drop that in the live chat too for people. So I made two videos that show how to do, you know, basically butane firing and how to do alcohol firing. We're going to do a video on how to do coal firing. That one I'm going to actually bring in another uh, expert to help explain that. Well, okay. That's that's the one thing I have been able to try was a coal fired live steam at uh, my friend Charlie's house. That's a very unique experience. Yeah, it's very unique, right? It's the uh, it, it, you got the smell of the coal, you got the the, the ash. Yeah. I didn't even realize the science that went behind it. He had like different containers of different types of coal that he's trying, different things that burn better. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Very nice. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so m moving forward, um, so uh, I guess the next question uh, everybody's waiting for me to ask is uh, about the uh, the GP60. Yeah, I saw uh, Joseph already. Uh, first question, when is GP60 right? Okay. It's a good, great question. So we do actually have a few of them already finished building. We got our sample here. Ooh. Now it's it has taken us a lot longer than we hoped, uh, but we are excited to get this. You know, get the ones we have finished. We we could probably be doing. We're, they're they're coming out in batches. Okay, so the first 50 were put together in the factory. They're going to go on our next container. And the container is going to leave in April, like the first week of April. So I think everybody knows like there's a big container shortage too, right? Yes. Yeah. We've been, we were lucky the last two times again, a container it didn't take too long to get here, but the future ones may, it's hard to say the the rates actually are keep going up. Like every, people thought maybe it would get better. It's actually getting worse for shipping. Um, so now we do have most of the electronics ready to go. Uh, we're, you know, just getting the, we got our, our brand new bottom boards custom made from ESU Germany, which will be the kind of the, the for both, uh, the track powered and the sound DCC ones. That's like the heart of it right in the middle. Um, we can play the video of, a, of the, the sample running. Oh, wonderful. Sure, let's do that. You guys can hear the ESU sound card in it. Okay. Is that the one you're looking for? Yeah. And what's not shown in this video is that the dish lights, they are, there will be dish lights, but they're not on the sample. To answer the question, uh, somebody asked there, the first video is going to be a kind of, a, it will be a mix. There's going to be, what I've seen so far was that there were more um, of the Santa Fe's, like the one Robbie had showing uh, at RLD. But there will be a couple other row names in there. And I think you have what, one more video of the. Uh... Yeah.
Hey, Ted. It is ESU on this one. Yeah, they're asking if it's DCC. Uh, yes. And I got to say that that locomotive uh, engine sound is like <laughs> music to my ears because I'm a diesel mechanic by trade. So just the, just the sound of diesel engines, you can tell, you know, the difference of certain engines and the noise they make and stuff. And that sounds really good. Absolutely. So a lot of questions about which one, when, when is, will this specific road name come <laughs> out? That It's hard to say. That's yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it can get a lot of the pre order like a lot of these pre-orders in the first batch. It, there could there will be another container that actually leaves probably um, shortly before summer too. Well, if you noticed, I have it and I'm not gonna ask you when my roads are gonna be in because I know you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna mention my roads. I'm gonna patiently wait for Robbie <clears throat> to call me one day and say they're here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yes, I agree. So well, play, play, play Robbie's video. Oh, yeah. Let me bring that up. Let's see here. I got, I got four screens going here. So, you know, I look like an excited <laughs> cat looking around. That's why I'm just trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. And I forget how many cars Robbie said he was polling with it, but if people would like to count at one point in the video, they'll be able to figure it out. Wow, that looks good, too. I mean, it's the startup people. Now, his has Rail Pro in it. Uh, Cody asked about the dish. Like, we, we will do a back for the dish. Like, the light doesn't come in the back. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I got to say, that's quite impressive right there. Wow. People always want to know what the first one is going Yeah. So the question of um, how many per batch, that's, I, I can't, you know, it could be, it could be a lot, it could, depending on how many we put finish before it continues. It's rattling my eardrums a little bit with the uh, earbuds. Oh, th those, I believe those are our best guns. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to ask you if you're going to be doing more of those again. I mean, I think it sounds like we need to because a lot of people <laughs> seem to like them and where were you guys when we sat in and stunk? They're all gone. They're all gone. Uh, this, you know, this has been a great, great product of the the high cubes. Ooh, yep. Here, let me. Uh, oh, that ain't the right view. There right. we go. I was, and I would. This was. I was there when we first produced these. I was at the factory. Yeah, those are very nice cars. We uh, we have another batch of them coming out actually this summer too. Yeah, they're yeah. Doing... pretty popular. Really popular, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the TTX ones were the have been the best, you know, the best selling ones, the yellow ones. Yeah, I mean, people like having some modern stuff you know i mean personally you know mm. it doesn't do the being connor but this is my favorite yeah that's a good one too you know i got a couple of these those are really nice cars as well that you guys did 
Yeah, well, we're making more of them. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a few uh, exclusive uh, road names for those. So, you know, I don't know if I should say who you can get them from, <laughs> but they'll be out there. So somebody was <clears throat> asking if the GP60 is fully dis assembled and ready to deliver. Well, when, when we have them, uh, the first couple of them, we might have to do put the electronics in ourselves here. Okay. And then once we have that kind of really like you know, foolproof, then we can move more of that over back to the factory. But the ones you get, oh. you know, we're going to deliver, obviously, will be fully assembled. <laughs> okay. I didn't understand the question at first. Now I follow. Uh, here's a good uh, question here. We, we discussed this all sides. And uh, Garden Railroad, or Charlie says, he's heard the new TTX cars wow. have a better yellow. I, I brought one, actually. Oh, right. Really. Well, while, while, he's while he's grabbing that, I, I see uh, <clears throat> Fortrack uh, says, Sean makes you want to get back in the G scale. <laughs> no? Oh, he, he likes <laughs> busting on me about that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Still in the box. Still in the box. Oh man. Now you're supposed to do the unboxing like Sean, and you get out this great big knife like you're going to pretend to open it with it. Ooh, I see all kinds of questions rolling through there. So we're going to have to make sure we get back through there. And kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got to start going back up myself. And... Ooh. Yeah, I remember the, the, the first run. Um, I, know my, I know my friend Charlie had, had a, some of the TTX and he weathered them up and it kind of dialed back the yellow a little bit on them, but... So this is the so they come with body coupler, the little oh. hook coupler thing. Oh, okay. How many people use that? You know, I'll be able to use it. Um, yeah, it, it seems like there's a mix of what people use. Some people will use the, the stock knuckle couplers that you guys have on there. There's some that use the, uh, the hook and loop, but a lot of people go to KDs anymore. Wow. <laughs> I see, uh, gar uh, garden RR down there. He said the, the yellow doesn't hurt his eyes already, so that's good. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, there's a good question. We gotta ask that one. Oh yeah. And this, yeah, the lighting in my room is not not great, but it's definitely it's a it's a paler yellow. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely more realistic. I would like to have a six pack of it myself. <laughs> so at this point, I feel like we, I think we've done probably uh, eight so far. At least eight numbers, maybe twelve now, and there's going to be another. You know, so th there will have been a lot of car numbers by the end of the year. I was just saying, I got a friend that probably could do with twice as many car numbers. He's got a TTX addiction. <laughs> well, a lot of people do because it's something more modern. It's something you really see on a railroad today. So it's it's been something that's been needed in G skill for a long time. I, I in my opinion. Yeah. But we definitely uh, you know we we love having feedback from people like what do they want and you know, giving us the idea to 
what to do next, right? So this was a great idea. Um, obviously, when I when I started, it was already in progress. When I started at the company, this was already in the works, and we were already tooling it. Um, but the next project, you know, we'd love to have any all feedback too. Can I bring up a couple questions here, Andrew? Yeah, absolutely, Sean. I'm uh, uh, I'm just I'm scrolling through <laughs> here to find the video where Charlie uh, weathered uh, one of those to drop it in the chat for people. It's so un right? somebody asking for unpainted. I mean, we do have undecorated ones that are just painted gray. Oh, you do offer them. We do have undecorated high kids. They're just gray. <clears throat> you know, they're all white, all gray. Very easy to paint over. Man, Sean, we've done a lot of shows so far. I'm having to scroll here for a while. <laughs> you know, thanks to Ted. Um, Ted gave us the idea to add a little uh, spring here, like a metal piece that keeps the, the sides spread out. Oh, oh okay. okay. So we've been, we've been mm. implemented that. That was a good idea. Uh, so they're asking, are you open to doing any new models? Like, uh, for example, um, in the world of G-Skill, there isn't any manufacturer that makes a cylinder hopper. Uh, so are you looking to expand any into anything in the future or? Yeah, definitely. We're going to be. I want to make new, new models too. Okay, great. It is, you know, the. It does take a bit of you know. A, it's a big risk, right? Obviously, when you're doing a new plastic injection mold model, because of the upfront cost of tooling. Oh uh, yeah. But yeah. It, it, actually, oh. A, a question on that, like, you know, say from the time you decide that. We're going to make something new and i know it could vary depending on what it is but like you know how much time does that actually end up encompassing from saying yeah we're going to do it to you know the time you actually can sell i i know that's a very loaded variable <laughs> question i'm i'm we're just kind of curious you know because a, a lot of people you know i mean everybody wants everything obviously but a lot of us you know we, we kind of tend to forget that it's not like you snap your fingers and you get a new right. product for us, you know? Yeah. Um, the bigger companies can do it a little, a little bit faster. Right? For us, it's not so fast. It does take a while to go from start to finish. And, um, there's just things that happen that delay. You know, I, in an ideal world, it could be it could be a year, less. Um, tooling could be done in like a few months, but things do happen. So delays and then redesign. Oh yeah, going back. Kind of, there's all kinds of variables. We get it. Yep. Uh, or a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. that. So because of COVID, uh, we here in you know American side of AccuCraft have not been able to go to either our factories in China or our vendors in Japan for the last two years. So everything's been doing, we've been doing everything over the internet. Oh, okay. Are there any new North American 132 scale live steam locomotives coming? There will be, they are not yet announced. Okay. We just came out with the Southern Pacific P8. That is the live steam version. Uh, the electric version is coming actually pretty soon. Um, now, so you can order, if you order now, you can still get the electric version. You can still get live steam versions, alcohol or the butane. You can also get them as kits. Okay. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I was I was actually kind of curious. Um, you know, I know you guys a lot of times you do a, a, an electric and a live steam version of of an engine. Um, is there a lot of is there a lot of changes you have to do to do 
um, like an electric version of a live Steam or? There, yes, there are a lot of changes. Um, you know, a lot of parts you can you we, we do reuse. So the castings are mostly the same. Uh, the cylinders obviously are not real anymore. The we have to make a cap back head. Um, it's not super easy, but it is help. Uh, you know, we do get to reuse a lot of parts. I was just curious. I ask a dumb question, just tell me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gar really says it's hard to find those gray ones, the undecorated, I'm assuming. Well, hard to find on sale, maybe. They are in stock. Oh, they are? <laughs> They're in stock, yeah. Okay, well, there stock. you guys go. Go out and buy them undecorated ones and, and build your own stuff. We want to see what you guys can do because we have uh, several suggestions of uh different cars on I'm, I'm scrolling through here trying to pick out questions good uh questions here i put i put up the um p8 picture oh know. sure thing here you go here's a good one so uh suggestions for new uh, oh yeah that looks good Ooh. hang on i gotta look at that for a minute yeah <laughs> i like it yeah stop talking sean i'm looking at it so this <laughs> this model just like the GP60, it's a it's a long time coming, and finally it's here. <laughs> yeah, but all th all good things are gonna come. Everything's gonna get here. The GP60s are gonna get here. Now, I, there was someone that was asking earlier about the was it the GP60M that's like the wide cab? Is that is that like a completely? Well, I guess it's not a completely different different. Uh, it's got a different front. Just different front on it. Yeah. So there's not there's that's really the only difference. I was curious if there's a lot of differences or that's yeah, I think that's the only difference. It has a nose light because of that. Ah, so, okay. So I have a question for you. Um since you're open to suggestions from people for different products, uh, is there uh, a website they can go to for to to put in their input for suggestions? That's a good idea. Little, Actually, know. if uh, people want to drop in the chat now what it is they're looking for, I can try and uh, take yeah. the top options and put it in a poll for people to vote on it. To yeah, so it here we way. have Garden Railways. He's asking for a two-bay smooth side hopper. Uh, the big gondolas, he's right. Nobody makes a 66-foot go uh, mill gondola in G-scale. Uh, that's a cool one to have. That's a good idea. Uh, cylinder hoppers, nobody makes them in G skill. The SD9, that's another one that uh, is not existent. So, uh, hey, um, Stony Creek Railroad, I, I just say eh, it's a good them. You might be very happy, you know, <laughs> Mr. Rio Grand Southern number 20. That's uh. Yeah, so <clears throat> I see. I see you, Ken Hoffman. You're saying covered hoppers? Question mark. Yeah. Is your question? Are there more coming, or something more specific, Ken? Yeah. Here's here's a question. I heard you mentioned there would be some more of the covered hoppers soon. Any new road names? Uh, there is two road names that are new, but they're the exclusive ones. Um, I haven't talked to the people who ordered them, so you know, I should be okay, I guess. I think one. So there's basically there's three. There's there's Robbie RLD. A couple of them are his. There's Winona Garden. He's getting a Canadian. Oh, Pacific up in uh, Ontario, right? Yeah. And uh, Mr. Uh, LGB Co uh, uh, Gold Coast Station in Southern California. He's getting his Southern right. Pacific Black Widow ones. And then we're and then we're going to redo a few. Like we're going to redo the, the U UP. I think we're doing the Conrail. Uh, I forgot what else we're going to. That's and then those are kind of just inventory ones. 
Here we go. Any chance of bringing back the 129 AML live steam? Possible. Is that I didn't we did I didn't know people still wanted them. Um, I guess there's at least one. Was the K4 129? Yeah. The K there was the K4. There was that Docksider, which was a nice little engine. I'm gonna say um, I'll, uh, I'll pop it. The, the USRA 060. That, that was that's that's the uh, the K4 that you guys made there, right? Yeah, but that's a, that was electric. Yeah, it, it might look like it's actually too. smoke, but you know, smoke bomb does wonderful things for a picture. We do have plans for more 129 locomotives. I don't know yet if there any of them will be live steam or if we'll focus on electric. And the GP60 is actually the first diesel locomotive that AccuCraft has done, correct? That is correct. Well, that is correct in this 129 scale. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Because we've done, you know, 120 uh, electrics and we've done 132 electric. Like, uh, there's some here, actually, in this little. There's a few of them. If you can see it through the window. Can you change the view around there, Sean? Uh, oh, hang on. Maybe I can get it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Can you there. see the reflection? I don't know if the reflection is. Might be too hard to see. Oh, okay. I think we have a. Do we have a video that you took of all that stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can show that. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I think I think there was less reflection oh, yeah. in that thinking about it. Um, yeah. I don't think that's loaded up in the videos at the second. You might need to drop that in there, Channing. Oh, yeah, that's better. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there you go. So this is our, our office. Wow. <clears throat> uh, let's see, where did that go? Oh, man. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna have to come back to G-Scale, Sean. So like you know, that's the uh, you see the there was a line of center cap diesels, the uh, Whitcomb switchers. Yeah, we're doing that in two and a half inch scale. Wow, interesting. So somebody's asking, any chance of rerunning live steam K twenty seven K twenty eight? Uh, a chance? Yes, there's a chance. There is always a chance. There's always a chance. <laughs> and uh, Ken is saying he likes my idea, perhaps a suggestions page on the AML website for consumer input. I also recommend um, you can always email us, sales at accugraph.com. You can also uh, subscribe to our newsletter. If you go to uh, Live, Live Steam Station, which is our store site now, right when you get there, it's going to shoot up a subscribe, you know, pop up. Like if you just put your email in there, we'll make sure you get on our newsletter. And now, every now and then, I do send out a survey on that newsletter. Oh, cool. So I somebody, even got no response. I'm sorry for track. Uh, who, please, what, what was the email? <laughs> that, that that that's okay for track because I I thought Channing was ignoring me as well. Yeah, but that, that wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> who is for track? Uh, that is our friend Nico Corbo. Well, no, ask the question. I'll, I'll I'll answer right now. Yeah. Um, I, I just put the link to uh, livesteamstation.com, right? I just there, put that there's in. a question. I mean, are we creating models on different scales? We 
the scales oh. we do is so like there's HO, the O scale, 120.3, 132, uh, 7/8 scale, which is 1 to 13.7, 129, and then you go to right on, which would you know be a one and a half inch, two and a half inch, and we also do the one inch, <clears throat> three quarter inch. So that that, that kind of encompasses the different scales we do. Uh, somebody was oh, one one nineteen is for the, the the British market. Yeah, that's right. So somebody was asking. Uh, they they heard that you may be perhaps uh, doing an AML fifty foot bulkhead flat car. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. Again, okay, that's a possibility. It's something we're working on, possibly doing, but not. They're not. It's not definite, so it's not like an official. You know, it's gonna happen. Taking reservations thing. Okay. All right. So, just scrolling through the chat, I uh, I grabbed a few of the suggestions that people had, and I put them in a poll for the chat that should pop up. I've got. Uh, SD9, SW1500, a, what else was in there? GE ES44AC and Cylinder Hopper. So I, I put those in a poll chaining for people uh, to vote on uh, what they'd like to see more out of those options. Can you include a 66-foot uh, middle gondola? Seems like they were asking for that, too. I did not, unfortunately, because YouTube lets me do four options only. Uh, oh, that's it. But uh, if we people drop ask, a few, oh, the N5 could be. Uh, N5 or N8? Oh, we did an N8. He's asking for an N5. Oh, that's right. You guys did do an N8. I forgot about that. They're still in stock. Now, was was the N8 a uh, injection motor or was that brass? Brass. Uh, somebody's asking what happened to the. Hudson Drive, the Dreyfus Hudson. I thought that got produced, didn't it? Oh. Didn't get produced. Oh, okay. Could still get produced. Could still. Could oh. not. Could change scales though. It could. It could hop to one thirty two. We. I thought I'd seen a video of that running. That's like maybe that's what was making me think you guys had made it. We made two samples. Okay, that's what I saw. All right. Yeah, I know. I shot a video of it running when Fred Fred Devine was still alive, and he had the uh, Eichenbach Club at the East Coast Lower Scale Train Show run it for him, and mm -hmm. I actually got to shoot video of it running. Anything new for Seven Days Live Steam? Uh, there will be a British Seven Days coming. I believe that's called the mm. Diana. Yes. Can I share? I'll share a screen. And you yep. Can see. That will be the next seven eight one we do. Wow. Oh, okay. Mm. Now, I'm not like, you know, a real big live steam person. So the, the seven eighths. Seven eighths to an inch. So what, what what track does that run on then? Is that it still? It runs on the same, the same okay. track. That's what I, I, I thought, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. I should have asked AML 50 or 60 open down doorway. Yeah, that seems to be a popular... Um, one people were asking for is a 50 or 60 foot gondola. Mm -hmm. Something a little bit more modern. Seven eighths is 45 millimeter gauge and models two foot gauge. <clears throat> Very interesting. Hmm. They're nice big models. So you end up, you can see. Um, 
they they take small models and they make them it makes them bigger so you can really get some nice detail a lot of a lot of people into do seven eights like to do kit bashing making their own cars yeah there's i tell you what there's some really talented people out there that i, I look at some of the stuff they do and i'm like wow i'm not quite sure how they did that we did yeah. um we just did the you know we uh last year we still have them the sandy river which is huge, huge model. Uh, got a couple questions about your track. Are you still making six foot flex track available? We are making five foot flex track from now on. And it will be available. We just had this container. We just had it come in and in one day it sold out. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. wow. <laughs> so if you guys want track, you should you should pre-order. You should at least put a reservation in. You don't have to pay for it right away. Okay. You don't have to put money down, but you have to just say you, you know, uh, you go to our website and you say which track you want. So and now it's five foot sections, six per box. Okay, so you get 30 feet in a box of uh, tracking that's either the code 332 or the code 250 if you don't want to pay for it you can just select manual payment and then you don't have to pay and okay. put your reservation you, you do eventually have to pay though i'd like to point that out. <laughs> you have to pay, yes so but this next <laughs> the next shipment uh, this that's going to come in is going to have um a, a boatload of track yeah, it sounds like you guys needed a 48 foot container of it the way it sold out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see some one person in here asking on the GP60s if you'll have parts available for them as well. So I know there's some people that like to buy power trucks and different, you know, people like to kit bash and stuff. We definitely can we'll have parts, you know, you know, spare parts in stock. Um, I don't know. How many of the power trucks? We're not going to have any available right away for sale, you know, until we start getting a lot of these in. Oh, no, I understand. Um, oh, that was something I was going to ask you on the uh, on the GP60. Is um, that is that have traction tires on it, or is that just all smooth wheels on that? Good question. Uh, smooth wheels. All smooth wheels. I like I like it even better. I'm not a tra traction tires always cause me issues, but it wouldn't have changed my mind to buy them if it wasn't. I was just curious. And I, I do. <laughs> they are all metal gears too. Metal gears. Oh wow, you're going to get people excited now. Very nice. That that's something I, I hear. You know the different groups I'm on Facebook and that all the times is people when they're talking about gears in their stuff that they wish that they'd be made out of metal so <laughs> yeah i see uh, i see see uh we're, we're already getting comments about metal gears thank you for metal gears hooray for metal gears <laughs> somebody just said time to up my order of gb gb 60s <laughs> <clears throat> All I know, Brian, is I want to see your GP60s pulling all the little two-axle cars at the RLD open house. <laughs> That's my request. <laughs> no garden RR, not Metal Gear Solid. Not the video <laughs> <game>. <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. Like, Metal Gear Solid, That's, no. <laughs> that was my favorite game when growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're getting all kinds of good positive comments for Metal Gears, Channing. Awesome. So, um, yeah, this is exciting to finally get these out. And uh, it's been an exercise in, um, and it's been education to, to do this project, you know, learning about the the electronics and the getting our, you know, the the, the the trucks actually coming from Korea. Oh, 
Uh, somebody uh, asked, what type of metal are the gears? I don't want to say because I think I might say it wrong. Okay. I don't, I don't know for sure. And what I like about AML uh, myself personally is that Pretty much, it should um, be different materials, Ted. Though I, I do think they are different, so mm -hmm. they're not going to be the same material touching each other, right? Yeah, do you have oh. a C18? No, oh, hey, somebody asked for the C18. C18, give the people what they want. I think, <laughs> um, is that what uh, is that what that's the video? Doing? I have I, we've loaded up. You can, oh, all right, let's uh, bring that up there. Yeah, let's take a look at it. I know it's going really fast in the first. <laughs> is that it? Oh, is that? I thought you combined them. Yeah, I thought I did too. Or we might, you know, what we might have been in the in the middle of the video because we had it pulled wow. up before. Yeah, that's what it was. So this was just today. I was running this uh, at a friend's house. And I, I will go get the, the model, actually, if you want to see it. I tell you what, that, that, that elevation just makes my back and knees feel better just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me wonder how you did it, Sean, when you had yours on the floor in the basement. Yeah, if I had to start that all over again, I would definitely be raised. <laughs> But you got to remember, I did that when I was like in my early 40s. Oh, yeah. So it's still got oil on it. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, switch the view around there. There we go. Ooh. So the burner is not the same as the C25. It is a ceramic burner, but it's a sealed firebox. So you see a little window to look in. Oh, yeah. And if it works, you actually don't need a draft fan. You don't need the blower valve, and you will just send the, the fire through. It was steaming up pretty well today. It was a little... Uh, so a few things that we need to, you know, kind of review it still, um, which is why I'm glad we got the sample here. I wanted to have it in, in my hands to look over uh, before we go into our full production. I am curious on the, the live steam stuff like that, or is that able to have any type of like radio control with servos or anything done on enchanting? I think this one will be a lot easier to radio control. Okay. So that is something people do. Yeah. Oh yeah, interesting. We're, we're gonna extend this out a little bit, you know, and you can attach a different handle to this throttle, and you could put a, a servo on it. You could take mm -hmm. out this this uh, reverser, and you could radio control that too. Oh, that's got a nice action sound to it. Too. Oh yeah, this is new. This is first time we've done. Very nice. Uh, it's got two burner. It's got two jets. This one's got the axle pump on it. This one's got the Stevenson valve. So we're pretty excited for this product. It's it's going to be a big, big production. Um, it's so big actually that it, it's like uh, it. It's almost going to like, it'll, it'll take a little while to, to build all the units. So we're, do, we're doing some of them as kits. So people who get kits can just get them, you know, put it together themselves. We got like full blown and uh, exploded instructions on how to do it. Um, ben Shell had a good question for you. He's from California. He, said, he was from California. Now he lives in Missouri. Oh, I didn't know he moved. <laughs> What's up, Ben? He uh, asked, what's your personal favorite product you've ever made and why any scale? He's just curious. Hmm. 
I, I, th- I always liked, I guess my, one of my favorites, if just off my head was, uh, the one would be, I guess the Decoville, uh, I'll pull up a picture of that one. I think it's worth seeing. It's a seven ace model. And it was one of the projects where, you know, I was kind of involved from beginning to end of the production. Um, and I got to see it being assembled at our factory and got to like deliver it. There was a, there was a problem in the first batch that went out. So we had to do some repairs on that. That kind of soured it. But I think now it's the model and they're all sold out too now. Um, can you see it? Uh, set it? Yeah. Okay. It's a cute model, and it's just like it's was was fun to do. It was a fun project, and for that, I always have like a little you know, favoritism on it. Yeah, and 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 thinking about that, I got a where'd the question go? It was in here. Hmm. Well, now I got to scroll through here. <laughs> Where was it at? It, it, it got asked a couple times by um, Nico from Four Track. What well, question are you looking for? The um... oh, I, I don't know if that's something you can answer or not, Channing. If not, just tell me no. But yeah, Nico asked a couple of times uh, where you get your your engineering done for AML products. Uh, I mean, what does what does that mean exactly? That's the a good design? question. The designing of it, or I think that's what Nico meant. Um, I'm just looking to see if he. I was scrolling back further to see if he had asked it differently. Yeah, if you could specify Nico a little bit further on what your question was there. It, it, you know, in general, uh, we have people kind of around the world to help us. Uh, you know, he, he said yes, design. Yeah, we have like uh, people who help us kind of all over, depending on what it is we're trying to do. So the GP60, like that that design was done a while ago. Uh, and that there was actually a dedicated design team, an outside design team that helped us, uh, which I won't, I, I don't, I'm not going to say who actually, oh, just, just to keep that uh, within ourselves, but no, but depending on what we're doing, you know, sometimes the uh, the UK guys like will give us uh, help us with the design. We've had people in Australia help us with design work. We've you know it, it's international um, collaboration on these projects. And so for AML, I mean specifically for AML. It, it, it's kind of it's it's not one place, you know. Well, it's, it's, and somebody had asked, "Are you going to rerun the one thirty two scale streamlined passenger cars?" We are still working on that, so that's in in the works. Okay, we have because we have a lot of other uh, one thirty two coaches and cars that we're working on. Uh, okay, you know. So it's hard to it, it you know there's only so many things we can do oh yeah oh no we we understand yes um i was scrolling i got a, i got a, a a message from my one friend apparently he asked a question a couple times and i scrolled past it i can't find it now so i'll just ask you channing um he was wondering if there are any chances of the uh, virginian and cno hoppers being re-ran again uh, I think there's a good chance because we're running low. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna run. We're gonna run out in a, probably probably this year. So, yeah. The funny thing a, is, is running low is a good thing. That means people are buying it. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, so this year, like I think for the rest of this year, what I have, what we have planned for for rolling stock is we're probably going to do that we're going to do we're definitely going to do those three bay hoppers we're definitely going to do the high cubes again uh we're 
gonna do we have our high side gondolas in 120.3 we have mm. um in the 120.3 stock cars uh 120.3 stock cars that's the ams ams yeah yeah i i've I, I i typically stick with the more modern stuff but i've got a couple of friends that have some of that and i gotta say that's some beautifully detailed uh uh, products. I mean, uh, definitely very nice. More best cons, more best cons. I, I, yeah, everybody seems to want to, you to prioritize the best cons. <laughs> um, I do see uh, no more drop bottoms, though. Drop bottoms? Somebody asked for drop bottoms. That's can't do with those again. What they, are, uh, I'm not sure what those are. Drop bottom gondolas? Sure yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why my brain's going blank on that. But beautiful. Uh, I still have a few which are data only. Um, one twenty point three scale. But they are they're they're so detailed. They have a lot of like brass parts on them. That to do them again, it, the cost would be kind of too high and we'd have to sell them at too high a price oh yeah i can understand that too so i I've, I've said it a few times on different places and i just not can't do them oh okay i have seen that yeah that's a, that's actually i think the first car that i've seen in in that at my one friend's houses are very nicely detailed. Very nice. And that's considered a that's considered a drop bottom then. That's a drop bottom. It doesn't actually drop, but it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um okay. I mentioned I, Ruby upgrades and beg for Ruby tender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he keeps asking. Uh I, I you you'll be you'll, I think you're gonna be happy come this summer. So oh boy. Yeah. There is gonna, there's a new Ruby coming out. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be different than old Rubies. It's still gonna have it's still gonna be a kit, right? It's still gonna have these the basic look of it, but it, like the, the the roof's gonna hinge up. It's gonna be a solid, uh, a really nice stainless steel bodywork. They're gonna be easy to they're gonna they're, they were already easy to put together. They're gonna be even easier, and we're probably gonna do the tender. And we can start the party now. Robbie just joined us. <laughs> Hi, Robbie. Hey, Robbie. Glad you're with us. <laughs> uh, quick question. With the we can't, so it's, it, this is recorded, right? All the shit talking we did on Robbie's gonna <laughs> yeah. <see later. laughs> yeah. But I didn't uh, I didn't mean any of it. <laughs> <laughs> so a quick question with the uh sad passing of Fred Devine. Uh, will there be another representative in the future to come to the uh, shows for AccuCraft? Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to be attending more shows. You know, I think once now that we're getting past this, you know, pandemic, uh, definitely we'll be going to more shows. Uh, I'd love to go to the East Coast show again. I've never actually been. This summer we're going to be going to we're going to be going to the Garden Railway Convention. In Denver, oh, okay. And uh, you know, come next year, there will be we'll, we'll, we'll try to go to a lot more these Garden G scale shows. Oh, okay, great. And uh, Ford Track Railroad asks, "What is the best selling scale that runs on G scale track for AML? What is your best seller?" Hmm. Uh, for, right for cars, I mean the high cube is probably the best seller of this you know, recent recently. Um, I think if it's the best selling scale on that on that track, I think probably the we sold the most of our um, we sold a lot of one thirty two stuff. I think. But we've probably, in the history of Accucraft, probably that the 120.3 narrow gauge 
you know, like that, like I showed you in that video of our, of our office, all those K series and C series. Probably those are sold the most in the history of, of our company. And Robbie sells, he says, uh, he sells a lot of high cubes. That's his most popular one. And he's like a dealer with those things. You know, you can't. Yeah, that actually, uh, Garden, Garden RR is, he's, he's right. Actually, the Ruby is, is a per, you know, model. There's probably a thousand or so out there. At least. Wow. But we're excited for the new one, you know, and then we're also excited for this uh, Mabel that we're going to do. It's a uh, 060, which you can make it into, you know, variations, but that's going to be um, kind of a nice, it's like the next level from the Ruby. And you yeah. will be, as you mentioned, at the NGRC show this year. The, yes, that's right. Okay. I just dropped a link in the chat there. If <clears throat> on our on our website at largescaletrains.com, if you click on uh, the uh, large scale events at the top, I do have listed the upcoming shows that I know of. The uh, what do we got? NGRC, you said the big train operators. Um, the Riverside Railroad Club here by me is going to have an all G scale show coming up uh, in a little bit here. I'll, I'll, I'll put the uh, flyers I have for those up, but I just wanted to drop that in the chat since we're talking about shows coming up. And Four Track Railroad has a good question. How many boxcars do you make each run? Um, usually <laughs> at least 400 or 500. Really? Wow. wow, I didn't. Wow, okay. I'm not sure that's enough. <laughs> that's not, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that's enough. <laughs> until, until, until the one day is too many. No, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I understand that. Too. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's hard to say what, you know, is going to sell really. Oh, thinking about that, I forgot we had our uh, poll that I put up. And let me end that and see what uh, what we actually ended up with. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. So, oh, they all think it's a low number. 46 percent said they'd like to see an SD nine Channing, mm -hmm. and twenty five percent said they'd like to see a cylinder hopper, and then. Tied at fourteen percent is an SW fifteen hundred and a GE ES forty four AC. I'm actually kind of surprised that the older SD nine uh, locomotive is what people want to see. I figured they'd want something more modern. Well, the SD nine was a real workhorse. I mean, they that was used for long coal drags and stuff. I mean, that was yeah, a, that's true. That was a pretty cool locomotive, and it would be something different. G. And I agree with everybody on the cylinder hopper. Nobody in G Skill makes a cylinder hopper. So that market is actually wide open. Okay. Hopper all the way. Yes. Yeah. I, I know Southern Illinois G Skill says hopper all the way because he'd have about 60 of them and have them wrapped around Robbie's layout. <laughs> <laughs> so the. Yep. Hmm. SD seven dash nine, yeah. Of course, just ideals, Channing. We're not, uh, we're we're not forcing you to make anything. Oh yeah. At least I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought I thought these were firm orders. Uh, firm firm orders. <laughs> <laughs> firm orders. <laughs> I tell you what, if you made the cylinder hopper, I guarantee you that it would probably sell its first run. And see, and there's someone thinking outside of the box already, Brian Brunn. He said it, the SD9 would be a good starting point for his SD20. Hmm. Uh, Ken Hoffman says, put him down for 10 cylinder hoppers if you're going to go ahead and ask oh, for yeah. orders. Well, I'm going to put it up there so we can document it. So you know, <laughs> Channing makes him, you know, just going to knock on Ken's door and say, hey, you wanted these. <laughs> <laughs> 
And Sean Fields says, need to keep the Beth Guns going in production. Hmm. That's, uh, I mean, yeah, that's probably going to happen. So, uh, Garden Railway says he's a firm firm on the cylinder. I'm guessing oh. on the cylinder hoppers. Here's a question I don't understand, but sounds interesting. Um, because I'm not sure what the Mabel is, but I do understand what a non blind center drive wheel is. Mm-hmm. Does that does that make any sense to you, Channing? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I don't know if we can do variations on the whether it will be all with the blind one or, or without. The blind one is basically the middle. Yeah, you know the blind drivers, right? Yeah. One driver doesn't have flanges, so we can make tighter curves. Now, uh, is was that a was that a, like a design choice on the model, or was the prototype actually that way? No, the, Mabel doesn't have a um, doesn't have a, a like a real prototype that we're following. There's a few that are close. Okay. Um, but in this case, it's design choice so that it can, you know, we can do, people can have pretty tight curves. Ah, okay. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it might be possible to do, people can, can just swap out the, the driver. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know Steam is a little bit different, but, you know, unlike the diesels and that, the ones that come with the, the traction tires on them, I've, I swap out the axles on them for, you know, the non-traction ones. So, I, yeah, there's always options in there, I guess. There sure hmm. is. Let's see. Uh, that, you know, whoever asked that one, uh, Rockwell, that's possible. We'll have to check. I'll have to get back. Give me a hopper and a family line system on N C board. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh the hoppers are I mean there was a ton of road names, especially on the covered hoppers. <clears throat> I mean um, you really go crazy over making different road names for the hoppers. That's oh sure. my goodness. Well actually thinking of, thinking about about uh the uh the, the freight cars and that an inter i guess an interesting question channing and, I, and i've seen people mention it um in the past on stuff you know where people want to have different you know road numbers and obviously you know a lot of times when you're making is each road number is like its own lot of production uh-huh. have, have you guys ever thought about doing cars that are done up that are like minus the road numbers or people could apply their own I've heard people I mention. Thought, I thought about that. I, you know, we did that on the. Um, we do data only ones sometimes, right? Um, but, I mean, people in the chat, how how many of you would actually want a car that didn't have a road number? Hmm. Because There's like, how, how you know, where would you get the road number these days? Who who like? Do you guys know who currently? Um, you know, who, I know. I know that Stan Cedarleaf uh, recently passed away, but I know there's like uh, what Circus City decals I think is out there. Um, I believe Michael Vicky still does decals as well. But now that you said that about that, I want to actually drop that up there and make that a poll. Let's see. Yeah, everybody's saying the same thing. Circus City decal. Hmm. <clears throat> There's a few people in here saying that they would buy uh, ones without the road numbers. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, yeah, we could do that. You know, I could look into that doing no road number ones. Uh, is that for the people talking about specifically for our AML cars? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like the uh, you know the the, the high cubes and Beth Gons, uh, of course the covered hoppers. Oh, uh, did you guys do double door box cars at one time? I thought I, I think saw those. Did. I think, I think so. so. Before my time. Yeah, I think it was the forty foot double door box car. <clears throat> okay, so 
I, I just put a simple poll up there of with or without road numbers on uh, on cars to see what people uh, have to say back. And what was what was that there? Ben Shell said on a 132 smooth side passenger cars, you guys offered it without the road numbers, and he thought that was a good choice. Hmm. Chris had a had an interesting request there. Slant nose E units in 129. Slant nose. Was that, is that like a was that an E6 or something, Sean? That had the slant like that, like that. Yeah, color. it had a real slanted nose on it. Yep. Hmm. Well, let's see. What's people voting in the polls so far? Right now we're forty-two percent with numbers and fifty-eight percent without. Wow. I mean, I could I can say that I you know I'm not I'm the type that's usually not too overly concerned about having a bunch of cars with the same numbers, but you know I I wouldn't shy away from buying cars that weren't numbered. I'd probably run them without numbers and be happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the interesting thing about our hobby is that you know there's people from all different factions. Some people just like running stuff. Some people like prototypical things. So, okay. you know, the road numbers on our um, these plastic cars they're not decals, right? They're they're patterns. Those are yeah. I was gonna say yeah. There is like a stamp on there, right? Yeah. So you have to make a tool. The, the actual pattern to to do every number right or to do the you don't do it number by number you do the whole thing yeah it's done as one like one set and, and actually thinking about that I, I didn't i didn't notice when you were holding the car up there but let me look at the one i got here so when you're doing a pad print i, I don't i don't see it on on this one but when you're doing a pad print do you ever end up with well, I'm sure you do end up with letters or numbers that are like over a rib. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's an even more kind of specialized kind of thing with the pad print, so you can get that even stamp on there. It's just it's it's something that happens. You can't, you know. Yeah. Well, it's just something I never really thought about till you mentioned that. There's there's a there's a lot of work that goes into this stuff that you really don't think about. Looking through the chat here. Let's see if we have any other. Yeah, I was looking at that. Brian says, if you see my 14 WC car high cube train, there's only four road numbers. Ah, okay. Right, right now, there's about a 10 percent difference. Uh, still leading with without road numbers in the poll that I put up there. Okay, that's um, good to know. I'll, I'll let that go for a few minutes and see. Uh, How I, many people I, are in the chat? Uh, let's see. Right now, we have 67 people watching right now, and it looks like we've had 32 people vote in the chat. Which reminds me, I, I posted it in the chat earlier, but if there's anybody that is wanting to live chat and it's popping up saying that you subscribed and it was made for kids, it, it's an error with YouTube. If you unsubscribe, subscribe again. You'll have to wait a minute after you resubscribe, but once you resubscribe, wait a minute, then you should be able to chat. I'm not Sean and I both ran into that on on his channel and mine for some reason. I don't I don't know what the deal is with it because we're not marked made for kids, but that seems to fix it if you unsubscribe and subscribe back. Ins and outs of YouTube land. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why to get so many glitches in the in their stuff. Can you you want to show the the screen I shared? What's that? There's a screen. Oh, I'm sharing. Here we go. So that's Ooh. the Mabel. Ah, okay. 
and it's going to come in like maroon, blue, black, and uh, like olive green. Very nice. And this will be uh, one of the first models we do where, well, it's going to have radio control as an option. Oh. Ooh. Wow, it'll come from, it'll be from you guys with radio control already. Yes. Very nice. Um, you guys made what, like a, an 060, like USRA switcher some time ago, I think? Yeah, 129 scale. And that, that was, you had two, two versions of that too, right? That was a steam and an electric version of that? Yes. Okay. That was, I, I, that was before my time, but I heard that was a pretty good selling product. Um, you know, I've, been, I've heard people who wanted, you know, again, but it's hard to, it's hard to tell with these, with doing a rerun of a locomotive, how oh, I, it will yeah, be. I get it. If you can justify doing, you know, these days with our locomotives, we try to do at least 150, maybe. So that would be a great number for doing a locomotive. Yeah, it looks like I'm not getting any other votes in the polls. So let me end that so it totals it up. <laughs> well, I, I see Gardner said he has uh, three of the 060s. That's enough. That's enough. Mm. But, you know, what, what about those of us that don't have three? <laughs> 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 um, what about those of us who don't have three <laughs> so yeah it looks like uh 55 percent of the people that voted like i said there was like 36 people 55 percent said they they'd buy them without road numbers uh 44 percent said with road numbers hmm those okay. numbers seem seem kind of off 55 ah. and 44 that math doesn't add up that's what it's telling me though Donations are accepted. So, <laughs> Kenny Kincaid, we will take any donations you want to give us. Although I know that's not what he meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we do own our molds. Oh. Um, if somebody is. You know, oh, I, I, was, I didn't see the question at first. I'm like, huh? Yeah, yeah I guess I guess that was kind of a kind of fueled by uh, some manufacturers in the past. I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but I know there's been debate about who owns molds and different things. That's just a whole crazy thing. Yeah. No, it's it, there. There are molds. So. <laughs> I'm not laughing. At you. I'm, la I'm laughing at Garden RR again, or our friend Kyle's making fun of his stack of 100 hoppers he has. Too many trains can just be a big problem, you know? So let's see what we else have coming up this year. Uh, you know, AB60s, Electric PH, the C18, the Mabel, the Ruby, more track. Uh, but we're also doing a lot of life, uh, large scale. So like the right on stuff. Um, we have GP forties that would, that are, a lot of them are actually in now. We're doing the electronics for them and they're going to go out to the customers. We've been ah. doing the, the Jackson sharp coaches in two and a half inch. We have our, uh, two and a half inch goose, which have been, a pretty successful project uh and the new versions of those are going to be here this summer and yeah. i will be at also i'll be at the triennial the train mountain triennial i don't know if you guys know the train mountain no i haven't heard of that what's that the train mountain is uh, kind of like disneyland for for ride on trains it's over in oregon it's a dead oh area. yeah i've heard of it now it's like a couple miles of track and they're doing their big three year, once in three year meetup this summer. Just so happens to be the same time as the Garden Railway Convention. 
So I have to do like a bit of both. I have to drive from Oregon to Denver. I happened yeah. to run into a, a YouTube video of Train Mountain. I was like blown away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Train Mountain. Yeah, you gotta check that out uh, on YouTube. Just type in Train Mountain, yeah. you'll see. Uh, I'll make a note of that here to take a look at that later. Train mm -hmm. Mountain. Yeah. But luckily, Train Mountain is like, that's like a two week thing, right? There's gonna be the work week, there's gonna be the regular week. So I can go to a bit of it and then hop over to to Denver. So from big, big um, stuff to little stuff. I was looking at, I don't know what they're talking about in the chat, but I see Garden RR put, he's responding to somebody else, but I'm looking at it and I'm like, my head hurts looking at those numbers. That's uh, gauges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see what he's saying now. Ah, live, live, uh, live steam magazine covers train mountain gardener are said. Live steam magazine is really a very nice magazine. It's for mostly it, it does the garden stuff too, but they do a lot of large write on articles like trains and stuff. Um, you know, for write on, it, 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 the annoying thing is that you have seven and a quarter gauge in a lot of the rest of the world. And then you, here in America, you have a lot of seven and a half. And then even some in the West Coast, they do seven and a quarter. So there's just a little difference, right? Um, and we are making more of our models have uh, easier to re-gauge the wheels. Oh, OK. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I, uh, Gardner R, I believe, is a, uh, I'm going to probably get it wrong and he's going to yell at me, uh, a writer for uh, Live Steam Magazine. Oh. I'll wait for the private chat to yell at me and tell me I got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um. But, you know, if I get that wrong tonight and Sean wrecked 10 names, we're doing okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ah, see, I got it wrong. He's a contributed contributed editor. Thirty, see, thirty miles of track. You can be yeah. out there all day and never come back to where you started. Wow! But yet, my wife would somehow still find me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah. There's a uh, there's an interesting one someone was mentioning here is uh, spine cars. Spine cars. Spine cars. Those are the articulated cars that the flat cars that uh, carry uh, trailers or containers. Oh. oh, that's where like you have like the like the five units and like each one holds one trailer. Okay. Mm. That's sort of like a little niche right there. Uh, yeah. Spline car, yeah, Gardner, yeah, spline cars, not spine. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So the shows that are coming up, you say you are going to the NGRC this year, right, Channing? Yeah, I'll be at the NGRC. I don't know. Where's the narrow gauge convention this year? Um, hmm. Good question. Will be in last year was Hickory, North Carolina. Seattle. I'll probably oh. be there. I, I I could be there. Seattle. Um, Is there any other shows that you might be making an appearance at? Just out of curiosity, I know uh, you can't go every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so the, there's the garden, the National Garden Railway Commission, and uh, in July, I, so there's one called the National Summer Steam Up, which is the big uh, live steam steam up. So people who like live steam, that's kind of a. It's I highly recommend it. I have I had a great time last year. It's in Lodi, California. It's kind of our backyard. Okay. That's going to be in July. So if people watching this want to, they want to <laughs> see some live stream trains, they want to learn, they want to play, 
there's like eight tracks there. It's a, four days, five days long, and you can. You can now is that is that uh, right on or one twenty nine? Uh, it's it's the it's the forty five millimeter. Okay. Page. It's uh, you know a lot of what we do. So. Okay, I was just curious. Um, <clears throat> and then so the year uh, in 2023 what year is this is 2023 next year 2023 the garden convention is going to be in Santa Clara ah okay so that's that is just like within 40 minutes 50 minutes of me uh, oh wow we're going to be you know doing an open house for that show oh so people, if you're gonna, if you attend that convention, you definitely can visit, visit our office. What do you say, Sean? You want to be my plus one? I know, I know, you want to see the office. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, the the behind the scenes uh, with Channing at his warehouse, it's wonderfully set up. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, it, when you think of a warehouse, you just think of you know disorganized and stuff everywhere but it's not it's very well organized well lit he's got led lights on all the shelves trains are all laid out he's got signs i mean it's it's definitely set up very nice for a visitor so if you're going out to that convention definitely check him out it's worth the stop to to see his warehouse my warehouse would be the one with things falling over dimly lit <laughs> aisles you know just saying uh, I was just going to, since we're talking about shows, I was going to pop up here real quick um, on our on our site. And if there are any large scale events that people know of and they'd like me to list it on the site for other people to know about it, uh, just go to our site and shoot me an email and I'll, I'll gladly add it as long as you have all the info for it. Um, but <clears throat> coming up in not just next month here uh the cincinnati garden railway society has their uh g-scale swap meet coming up march 19th uh have, have you ever heard of or been to entertainment junction uh, channing no no um i believe it's probably what the largest indoor g-scale setup uh if you ever get a chance to visit it, it, it's really amazing the way they have it laid out. Uh, is, I haven't this been there. A, is this a permanent or is it just for oh, this? No, it's, it's permanent. Um, uh, I believe it's one of the members of the Cincinnati Garden Railway uh, Society that actually owns it. But when you go in, they kind of they, they kind of start out with like the early days of steam. And as you go through, the layout kind of changes until you get to the very end where it's modern equipment. They have like uh, working intermodal cranes and stuff on there. It's it's really amazing to see. Um, so that that's kind of an added benefit to anybody that goes to that swap meet is it's also right there at Entertainment Junction. Uh, let's see. And of course, <clears throat> the East Coast Large Scale Train Show. Um, unless something changes, you will see me there. Uh, I did. Uh, Not just on, you, huh? Not just you, you'll see us there. Well, I didn't tell my wife about you and I. <laughs> I <was kidding. laughs> uh, yes, you will. You will. You. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see Sean and I, uh, as well as my wife. Uh, there you go. You know whether she's shooting daggers at Sean, I'm not sure, but we'll find out. <laughs> but we have the East Coast show coming up uh, April 1st and 2nd, and that's going to be right next to Star Hobby, right, Sean? Yeah, right next. I mean, you can store hobbies along like maybe the next. It's right there. It's like within walking distance. Okay. Um, and of course, you know, you don't want to miss the RLD Hobbies Spring Open House, April 29th and 30th. Um, it's always a good time to go to Robbie's. You can spend some money, run some trains on his layout. Uh, always keep in mind that. Robbie does not have track power, though, so if you're going to go and hang out, it's live steam or battery. Does anybody ever run live steam at Robbie's? I can't answer that question because I've only made it there once. 
Um, I I don't know. If, there's plenty of people in the chat, I'm sure, that go to RLD to the open houses, if not Robbie himself, if he's still hanging around. Maybe someone can drop in there if they've seen live steam running there before. I mean, that's a huge, huge track. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you're not running radio control on it, I guess you'd be chasing that around. <laughs> uh, and of course, the uh, the big train operators uh, are going to have their convention coming up. That's going to be Mystic, Connecticut. And actually, it looks like what that's June 29th, 24th. Yeah, June 19th to the 24th. So that'll actually work out nicely because the NGRC. So can I give uh, you guys the information for the, the Lodi steam up and you can. Post yeah. It later? Yeah, absolutely. I will. I will add it to our website. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I try to do everything, but I, I, I really want to make the website kind of a resource for people to, to find, you know, stuff on large scale. Uh, along with doing my regular day job. <laughs> I also plan this year to probably go to the UK for a few shows. Oh, interesting. I've been, I've been lucky enough to do that a few times uh, before COVID. And it's been, it's always been a great time. Ah, yeah. well, there's an answer to, uh, to a question there. Um, Tim Stump. And Aaron Fowler has run live steam at uh, Robbie's. Would you consider updating the cover hoppers to close the underside center still open? <clears throat> I know, I know what they're talking about. Um, uh, let me let me finish this. I'll hold up my hopper car here, if you're, unless you're unless you know what he's talking about, Channing. I mean, does he mean the thing that like the little sliding thing and stuff? All the he he's talking about. This opening that's that's right oh. in here. I've, I've seen a couple people that have taken and built that up and, and closed that in. I guess that's actually not open on the prototype. Oh. Uh, well, it might be too late. Sorry. Uh, let's see. And then this is the club that's actually near me. This is the Riverside uh, Railroad Club. Yeah. They're going to have their uh, all G-scale show in... Uh, june 25th and 26th um they will have their indoor layout open it's a pretty nice layout that uh, people can see and i think there's still some details being worked out for this but that <clears throat> they did the first one last year it was a really nice show so and once again if you go to largescaletrains.com you'll see a link at the top for events you can click on and i've got links to go to uh their actual site so you can get more info on them. And but, speaking of train show events, the question was asked, has the 2024 NG, NGRC site been picked yet? I don't know. Should have been. Uh, it, sh it should have been. I, I don't. I mean, I I've heard a couple of people trying for the 2024 show, but I don't know who actually got it, if it's been picked yet or not. And you might you might have to forgive Colin Channing, but he, he got on late. Yeah, possible I see. Baby, possible mm. baby coming today. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good excuse. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, congratulations. Yes, con congratulations, Colin. I, I asked him the other day how much longer, and he said they were in the any day now phase. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll hold this up here so we can see a little bit better. Oop, do it that way. But yeah, what what they were talking about? I'll see if I can. Well, yeah, you can that right in there where that's open. I, I guess on the prototype, that's actually like all. Four oh minutes. yeah, that's uh, uh, closed off on the prototype. Yep. I actually, I saw someone make a post about it some time ago and they like used styrene to fill it in. And then I for, forgot about it. It's not something I really think about. I mean, it's but, on the bottom. What's the possibility of seeing it on a garden railway? It all depends. 
It's, it's not going to stop you from buying. Unfortunately, it's, it's definitely too late for this production to do a big change like that. But it might be something to think about, I guess, maybe if you do a, a run in the future, maybe. Yeah. Oh, I, I see. I see Nico giving Colin a hard time. Priorities, Colin. Priorities. <laughs> so uh, to, to answer the question about the Jeep CZ release, like like I said earlier, they're going to start coming out in the next, like the next container is going to have some of them in there. I don't know quite yet which road names. Some of them are going to be Robbie. Some of them might be ours. So people are going to start getting their pre-orders um, delivered this summer. I just figured I'd pop that back up there while we're chatting here for a moment because I'm sure people love seeing it. Very nice. Yeah, so he's got the dish lights on his. Yeah, I think I think he put his own dish lights in there, didn't he, or no? Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the let me see I can turn the sound on so. Yeah, this is the best part of Robbie's video when he, he he pans back and shows how many Beth guns he has behind that. So that that means that Southern Illinois G scale with a couple of those should be able to have about ninety five cars behind his. <laughs> Well, in actuality, with like a hundred cars, you would need a uh, five GP sixties, two up front, two pushing, and a uh, mid train helper. I think at the last uh, mm -hmm. the last open house, the one I didn't make it to, I I believe they actually ran a train with uh, DPU on it. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, it was wrapping just about all the way around the layout. Oh, really? How many cars were on that, do you know? On that DPU that they did? I would have yeah. to go and find the video on that to, to tell you. Hmm. But, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robbie says, three should pull 100 cars. Yeah, Robbie, I was just uh, joking around uh, talking about DPU trains. <laughs> But yeah, technically they are they are strong enough. Uh, they seem to be pretty strong. But uh, I was just joking around with DPU cold drags. Um, let's see. Let's see if anybody else had anything in here. Uh, Garden Railway says he runs DPUs on on here with the grade. Yeah, he does have a bit of a grade on his layout. Hmm. Which it is kind of interesting running live steam on it. Uh, the day that he let me play around with the, the live steamer that he has, because you start at the top of the hill, and since it was coal fired, by the time it makes it back up the grade after going around the layout, it's time to shovel some more in. I see there was a question here from Mike Deberg. Yeah, it's right. I see it. There you go. You got it. <clears throat> Any chance there might be some. AML Trinity spine cars in the works. GP sixties look better pulling intermodal trains. Well, uh, not in the works, but something we'll consider. Oh, and if any, oh, is it spine or spline? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's spine cars, not spine. spine. Cars, yeah, okay. So I do want to share one more thing before oh, I absolutely. Think, uh, I gotta get to dinner. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I think um, some of you maybe in the set have seen that we're doing our YouTube channel called Steamaholic. If you put the link in, thank you. Yes. So the next video we're, we're working on is, if you do the share, what I'm sharing on the screen, is I'm making a um, instructional video in like several, several parts on how to put this kit together. Oh, very nice. So this kit is available for sale on Livestream Station. It's, the, it's a 119 scale. Peckett, so it's a British Australian model. Um, it's a butane fired. It's 040. It's really, it's very pretty. I, I find it to be a really uh, you know, attractive engine, and 
people in the UK uh, all had really, you know, positive reviews on this model. That it's been a really nice runner out of the box. So we do have a lot. Of, we do we do have these available as kits. There's a this two green versions. There's a blue, maroon, black, and uh, one customer here has already put the kit together. He said it was not not difficult, pretty fun. So. I'm going to be making a YouTube video on it. I hope if you guys subscribe, you can see it when we as we release it. So the first, you know, couple of sections and the next section. Hopefully, yeah, I, got, be. I dropped a link in the live chat again, but it's in the description as well. And I, you know, and I and I started watching your your one video on uh, doing the the live steam firing chaining. I had to go back and finish watching it, but it seemed very. Uh, and informative very well done also you guys can just you can adjust on youtube the speed from you know one to like 1.5 you'd be finished much faster <laughs> <laughs> i talk kind of slow in the videos but yeah i'm gonna have to do that on sean's videos from now on he's got a couple of long ones on there uh <laughs> i know you got to get going here channing but there was joseph lipinski had one last thing that he had on there and that was, uh, you know, he said everybody's been hitting, hitting you with questions, but he was wondering if there's anything you want to ask the community. Oh, uh, that's it. I, 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 w I just want to know what you guys like. I really, if you guys share with us, you know, these things. I know sometimes I get emails and I, I miss them sometimes. We're a pretty small you know, company really. We only have a you know few staff, and it's hard sometimes. It's easy to lose uh, track of things, and certain things might get lost in the in the fold. So don't feel don't feel bad to call or, or email again if you have if you have something you want to say. Yeah, that, that's something you learn in the IT community. Is you know. If you send one email and it goes unnoticed, just don't assume you're being ignored. I can tell you my day-to-day -day work that I can get tons of emails buried in my inbox. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and of course, your your site again is uh, livesteamstation.com, right? Which I should have in the description. Actually, I know I have it in the description. Well, that that and like the live stream station. That's our like I said, our store online store it's where we kind of put a lot of the different products we do like I, we talked earlier about you know maxi track aml it can get kind of confusing with all the different variations so we've made this new store and the way you should use it is that you can kind of search by what you're looking for and then you there's a filter on the website so you filter by what scale or brand or gauge or and try to find what you're looking for or you just type for in the search box there's also um, a marketplace, and I can I like to show you guys what that looks like. Oh wow! Oh okay. Well, I do. We do have consignment sales. People who come and say, "I, I like to sell this thing," and we can list it for you. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Ooh, is that the uh, the steam tractor you were talking about? The Maxi Track uh, Case Traction Engine. That is one we made for them, and those are oh, okay. Those are all sold out. So that's, I think, it's a very fair price for a, a like a almost new case traction engine. Ooh, I forgot you guys had done the E six Atlantics at one time. Yeah. yeah. This is the, the the one that's coming out right now. Oh wow. <clears throat> Oh, come on, Sean. You know you want one of those. And it's butane fired. And I'm assuming that has RC on it? Or is that just... It does not have RC. You, you, you just manually control it. Huh. That's pretty wild, though. Mm -hmm. I, did, I, I didn't really realize that there was um, models of live steam tractors like that. That's kind of wild. Well, all right. I know you got to get going here, Channing. Um, yes, some somebody is uh, messaging me and saying, hey, "Get over here." <laughs> uh, so, oh. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, I was just looking here to see if there's anything else. So, all right. Well, um, everybody, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here. Of course, we'll, we'll be back in uh, two weeks here with another show, uh, largescaletrains.com. Uh, I don't have any info yet, but if you go to our website, as soon as I have everything ironed out for the next show, I'll have it listed up there. Um, so, any you, last Sean, parting words? Thank you, Andrew. I, I, it was great to be here. Thank you guys, all the great questions in the chat. And I, I would love to join back someday. So Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right, everybody. We'll see you later. Have a good evening. Okay. We'll see everybody later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>